Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time, and every now and then I make a video that's a bit out of left field, even for my flexible catalogue of content. Today is the day in which I definitely take on something more challenging, not because it's a hard topic to decipher, though it somewhat is, not because it's even particularly controversial, but because I expect it's going to dispute a prevailing narrative which has been accepted by many spectators, and also defending people who typically I'd have no interest in defending. But here we are, half a year later, and after a fair few controversies, I think it's time we have a discussion. This is Zoella. And this is Alfie Dates. They are a pair of British vloggers, they are partners, and they are both relatively successful. Zoella is a lifestyle blogger who focuses on a variety of vlogs, primarily leading towards more beauty sort of content, makeup tutorials, item recommendation, you know that shit. Whereas Alfie Days, also known as Pointless Blog Vlog, a name that just rolls off your tongue, makes videos on a broader range of topics, covering all sorts of things going on in his life, which clearly appeals to some people. These guys are proper classic YouTube stars. Back from the early 2010s, they've been around for a while. I'd heard of them, obviously, especially Zoella, she's kind of inescapable. They're smiling and happy, and often they'll do collabs with other people who are smiling and happy and everyone's laughing. <laughs> Joy to the world. Isn't everything fantastic? Why won't he stop smiling? In case you haven't gathered, I don't like them very much. Nothing personal, of course, but it's no secret to those in my inner circle that I loathe most vloggers. Their saccharine levels of glee seem extremely forced, and I find most of their content so vapid and meaningless. There is a video of them just fucking around in a swimming pool. It has over 1 million views. I mean, I'm not gonna knock the business, but Jesus Christ, imagine spending your day sitting down watching someone set up a swimming pool. For me, at least, it just seems like content for other people to live through. And although I understand it can be cathartic in the short term for an audience, this content always seems to leave a void for me. Maybe that's just who I am, but who I am affects how I feel. However, as much as I would love to rag on them, that's not the topic of today. I just wanted to get that off my chest. But now my chest, my abdomen, my ribcage, my trachea, my lungs, my bronchi are completely clear. We are ready to rock and roll. You see, Zoella and Alfie Days are part of the British Vloggers crew, and here in the UK we have a very nice little niche for them, not just in the vlogging community, but in the commentary community. It's no secret that the British vlogging scene has kind of died. Many people like Thatcher Joe, Marcus Butler, Ollie White, even the ones we're talking about today are what I consider stagnating. I was going to throw Casper Lee into that mix too, but since he made a video on the KSI drama, it seems he might just resurrect himself. But I guess we'll see what happens on that matter. I'm ready to shit on the graves of these people are the commentators, which is something I'd normally welcome with open arms. I mean, who doesn't love the chaos of calling people out for doing shitty things? And in this instance, the main targets were the titular characters of this little tale. Good old Zoe and Alfie here. Firstly, Zoe for her ill-advised Christmas calendar that came out at a tasty 50 quid, and secondly, Alfie for another little stunt in which he, quote, lived on one quid in a day. Spoiler alert, he doesn't exactly play by the rules. In these little escapades, it's quite easy to see why people dished out criticism fairly heavily. There were plenty of embarrassing moments to pick apart, especially when you're going in with the level of precision that many commentators do. As I've said in previous videos, people in different communities have never been held to the same standards that we in commentary expect. So when commentators felt ravenous, the vlogging community was a fucking buffet. However, I'm going to pose an interesting question today. Is it possible that in spite of all the legitimate criticisms that can be leveled against these individuals, that mistakes were made by ourselves? Admittedly, when the first lot of drama transpired against Zoella, I was completely on board for the ride. Obviously, I wasn't making videos about it at the time because it wasn't really my thing. However, I lapped it all up because it was entertaining and there was a feeling of righteousness. However, as the months went by, I began to question whether it was all worth the passionate vitriol invested into the numerous videos. And by the time that this second set of drama came around, I was convinced that this was all a very neatly orchestrated ruse. How did it happen though? Well, to be honest, given the level of certainty most people have assumed on these topics, I'm going to begin by returning to the original situations that have sparked this passionate run of videos from certain creators and present a different perspective, and why I believe they're not necessarily receiving the treatment that they deserve. So I hope you're strapped in, because on the right opinion, we go 0 to 100 real quick. Let's get into it. Many calendars are not good value. 
I think that's one of the less controversial statements I'll be making in this video. You're feeling festive, so you buy a piece of cardboard with holes in to fuel that sentiment. Honestly, if you want 24 pieces of chocolate, just buy a bloody bag. I don't know why you'd embed it in all the merriment bollocks. But hey, that's just me. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not by nature the most gleeful gent. In fact, there are very few things that I like that I'll be talking about in this video. So if you're here for your daily dose of positivity, you're probably in the wrong place. But anyhow, like all content, there are cheaper calendars and more expensive calendars. Zoella and her marketing team probably smelling the moon from a mile away thought that it would be great to design some hot and spicy calendars. You know, the one that a Zoella following would happily shovel down. So they conjured up this little contraption. It's certainly an interesting piece to say the least. A little nifty design, 12 days of Christmas, all for the very affordable price of 50 quid. <laughs> 50 quid? I hear you say, that's extortionate. You know what? It is. And in their reaction to this, people very quickly jump down to hammer in this narrative. And many of the audiences follow suit. And to be honest, it's completely understandable. It was an absolute shit show, from the passionate rants from various commentators to a pseudo apology that left Zoella fumbling like she was trying to run the 110 meter hurdles in high heels, to Casperly's awful video on it himself, to the items that did really lack value for money. It's understandable why people were fairly pissed off. So, why in hindsight do I find the reaction rather disconcerting? As commentators, it's natural to try and sensationalize situations situations, because that's what makes content entertaining, to make a spirited speech at the end of a video which fires up the audience to make them feel like they're part of something greater. It's a natural facet within the genre, and these stars had perfectly aligned to burn Zoella out of the sky. Often that reaction can be given a pass, even if it's overblown, because of the notoriety held by the targets of these videos. For example, it becomes incredibly hard to defend Logan Paul, and even though some criticism of him in the past might be debatable, the sheer enormity of his work moments makes people hesitant to say anything positive about him. The reason is commentary will typically hold a greater narrative about a character, and even if the specific situation is not one that may highlight the worst of a person's disposition, the greater narrative prevails in the end, and it becomes hard to speak in defense of people who may have a questionable mentality. With Zoella, she was fresh off the Hello World scandal, another predicament that I will discuss very soon. It seemed high tide to bring her and her dirty, scamming nature down. However, after a few months and another look, I think there's a more logical, albeit less dramatic, explanation for the calendar charade. So let's look at it in a bit more depth. Zoella has been selling beauty-related merch since 2014, and judging by her other merch, this is the first time she's really sold anything of particularly bad value. And in fact, looking at her other products, although they're not dirt cheap, which you wouldn't expect them to be, they're pretty all right for the standards of branded merchandise. And at the end of the day, that's what the calendar was. It was merch. We live in a world where people shell out money for a shirt with the word Supreme on. One of people's heaviest criticisms of Zoella's calendar was that the individual components were almost always significantly cheaper than it was being sold as separate unbranded content, which is the case for everything. A blank t-shirt is gonna cost less than a t-shirt with a design on. Designs and branding are what add the value in many ways. As I said earlier, Christmas calendars are not pragmatic, they are ornamental, particularly in the sort of section that Zoella was trying to appeal to. There are calendars upwards of 250 quid, which is crazy to you and I, but that's a norm in some circles. So why did people turn on Zoella? Zoella so specifically, obviously aside from the fact that she was a YouTuber. Well, she placed far too much value on the wrong parts of the calendar. And make no mistake, elements like the exterior are very pleasing. However, what was inside was unsatisfactory. And the reason that it was unsatisfactory was because of the product she chose. If she'd chosen items that had more appeal in their appearance rather than their utility, like most of the brands she was competing against, she would have been fine. Because it looks delightful. But unfortunately, choosing things like notepads and confetti, which by nature aren't considered to be enhanced by their natural design, made it much easier for people to lambast. You see, as human beings, when responding to products, we typically cross-apply various traits. It's why we're more likely to purchase organic healthy food like fruits, 
than organic unhealthy food like alcohol because we have assigned a different purpose to the unhealthy food. Normally we want to indulge ourselves and the idea of something being organic, for example, partly undermines its hedonistic appeal of that special taste to many humans. This is the same thing with Zoella's products. Considering the personalized design on the products, it probably cost more to design than your typical calendar. However, because many of them, like the notepad, don't have its purpose enhanced by a nice design, that effect is often glanced over. If she just stuck 12 different Zoella posters in there, people probably would have had less of a problem, even if it was cheaper to make. So essentially, Zoella slapped her name on the calendar and some utility items and expected that to add the value. However, all these other businesses had the smart idea to put their already branded content in there, which was enhanced by their namesake naturally, which is still in essence the same effect, it's just more subtle because no one's going to go to the production line of the content and actually find out how much it could cost without the big fuck off name on the bottle. The brand elevates the content, whereas there's nothing that makes a Zoella notepad any more purposeful than a normal notepad. As with anything, you weren't paying for the practical content, you were meant to be paying for the brand. However, the brand did not have the same effect because it was undone by its lack of appeal to being enhanced by the brand. Most contents like shirts, posters, even perfume are cheap as hell to make and if she stuck those in a calendar, no one would have given a shit. So I completely understand the criticism, but just because I understand it doesn't mean I agree with it. Everyone knows I'm a cynic, and I'd love to burn disingenuous vloggers at the stake more than anyone, but no. The fact that she had nothing to gain by choosing such items just says to me it was a bad decision, rather than a malicious one. The content in Zoella's calendar is not much worse than most Christmas calendars. The only reason it was torn apart was because it was easier to compare base level brands. Apart from the two cookie cutters, that was pretty idiotic. But that's not enough for a video. One of the extremely amusing narratives was that Zoella's Christmas calendar items totaled around 20 quid because you could buy the unbranded items on Amazon for approximately that. By that logic, every branded item is overpriced because you could purchase a store brand for a fraction of that. Honestly, if anything, the whole Zoella Christmas calendar ordeal should say more about society's strange justification for pointless branding, and the necessity to only call it out when dealing with cheap trivial items that emphasize the price gap that branding creates, despite it having a macro effect across all walks of life, from Beats by Dre to Yeezys to your favorite YouTubers t-shirts that have been shipped in from Bangladesh. However, with the latter examples, we would merely roll our eyes and call it business. Many YouTubers would have had us to know that Zoella has emerged the horned wench to steal your children's piggy bank money. Now, many may point out that other examples being wrong does not necessarily make it right, and that is true. If you halve the price of a calendar and save people a good buck, then more power to you. But the character attacks the narrative that she's some manipulative person who wants to exploit her fans is hilariously overblown. And the whole idea that the calendar was some atrocity and affront to the consumer, also no, this is well within standards of consumerism. If you want to criticize the culture that's running rife, then be my guest. But this is no exception. The only reason that it's treated as an exception is because of our own fallacious approach to branding. And maybe I'd be a bit more open if there was a specific YouTube context that makes the situation exceptional, like the differences between Michael McCrudden and the mainstream media. But I fail to see any context that sets this issue apart from the mainstream. First, it's much more similar to just standard merchandising and secondly youtuber merchandise is just as much a part as the culture as any other youtuber if you're going after Zoella, you have to acknowledge that you're singling her out, because the culture is rooted in exploitation, and given Zoella's record with merchandise, I'd say she's one of the less ill-intentioned people. As said earlier, this also seemed very opportune given the situation with Hello World, an event in which many British vloggers were meant to be able to meet up with their fans in an open environment. At the time, many commentators found the YouTubers involved to be culpable, and although it does appear to be an unprecedented disaster, I have found next to no evidence that Zoella was a beneficiary nor a planner of the event, bar vague claims about YouTubers being involved. The only criticism levied against her was that she was up on stage for a very short amount of time. However, I find this rather unfair, considering she was never registered to be on the stage, and did it out of courtesy. Hopefully, the Tarnacon saga showed the level of influence the organizers hold. No pun intended, Zoella seems like your cookie-cutter YouTuber.
I do not like bloggers that much, and I think people are coming around to that themselves, but honestly, I really question the necessity to bury her, in spite of her size. In my boogie video, I warned about the issue of setting the burden of proof too heavily. Equally, unnecessarily labelling YouTubers as scammers not only risk unfairly branding people, but also imposing steep standards. In certain circumstances, those standards can be imposed fairly, such as those criticising Michael McCrudden, because McCrudden stands as an exception. But in this one, imposing these standards just prevents you YouTubers from competing in the environment that exists outside of YouTube, because Zoella is not an exception in the concept, just the execution. To summarise, Zoella made a bad decision. It exposed a trend commonplace in merchandising, yet everyone criticised the concept of merchandising from it, framing Zoella as the pioneer of ripping people off through branding, when really the industry was cutthroat and she was just playing the game. She just wasn't smart enough to win it. Speaking of not smart enough, Let's talk about Alfie Days. I generally like to think that to be relatively popular on this platform, you need to have some level of intelligence, and therefore I do not want to speak ill of Alfie Days's cognitive ability. He must have used his intuition to tap into a mass appeal, and more credit to him for that. However, in his videos, he rarely comes across as the brain of Britain. I'm wearing your shoes, is that okay? Because, I mean... I can't find my sliders. Just so the stones don't hurt. And no, it's not just the accent, though it doesn't do him any favours. I jest, but my point stands. He clearly isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. His content, as noted, is the fairly vacuous vlogging content, with Zoella sometimes included, and he clearly wasn't thinking when he decided to do this surviving on one quid challenge. The video is boring as hell, his small talk is awkward, executed poorly, and with a title that is completely tone deaf which reinforces my point that he lacks perception. It's a completely confused misfire and a waste of time providing hardly anything of service. However, that's all it did. It was fairly worthless, but nothing offensive. Nonetheless, out of this, another narrative came, and one that was, once again, understandable, but completely distorted of what the real problem was. You see, Alfie Dades, in spite of the incredibly stupid clickbait title, was clearly trying to go for something simple, to challenge himself to go the day without spending more than one pound on nourishment, and seeing how it affects his lifestyle. It's an interesting little challenge, and it's a good premise for a video, I will stand by that. However, the initial title took it down a different route that forever marred its reputation. So you might ask, how could a couple words ruin a whole video? Well, you see, as people, many of us do have good strong principles, and one of them is that we should never deride people who are experiencing struggle. One of the ways to denigrate people who are struggling is to mimic them in a way that may undermine their tribulations. Now, many people who are in these positions of constant battle will have specific issues pertaining to that fight. When you're deprived, obviously one of the greatest issues relating to poverty is the problem of having to get by on small amounts of money. So in this instance, it looks like we have Alfie Days by the neck. This logical lineup looks infallible, but there's an escape clause that we often forget when caught up in the indignation. Just because someone may conduct an action that can be associated with a certain lifestyle doesn't mean it's an exclusive association. For example, someone may challenge themselves to do a video where they don't sleep for a few nights. Although fairly pointless to me, it doesn't mean that the person is disparaging insomnia or homeless people. There is a fairly clear alternative explanation. The idea of spending a small amount in a day is not so solely associated with being poor. You might just challenge yourself to be thrifty, for example. Maybe you want to save money. I spent less than one quid on some days. It does not mean that I'm lacking in any wealth. However, the key mistake that Alfie Days made was the titling, the idea that he was living on one pound, because using such a word makes it hard to provide an alternative explanation. The only people who really survive on such a small amount in that context are those who live in poverty. And therefore, this otherwise harmless video became a fairly insensitive shot at those who are financially deprived. 
But what happened was that this led to the comments that he made in his video being interpreted in a whole different light, particularly with certain commentators, commentators that I will address very soon. Extracting parts of his video and emphasizing these statements. However, if you watch the full video, I'd hope you'd see what I kind of interpreted, that it was just him trying to work around the fact that he had a very small amount of money to spend on eating as much as possible. Interpretation is key, and as I've said in my Boogie video, a majority of interpretation will be down to you, the creator. However, in situations of outrage, interpretation will be more messy, such as this one. In this instance, the somewhat justified annoyance over the title spilled into an unjustified annoyance over the whole video. For example, So it's probably going to be a little bit difficult, because I don't know how I'm going to be able to get quantity of food for under a pound. Thinking about it, I also didn't even have a protein bar this morning after my workout, or a protein shake which I normally do every single day as well. Seeing this without context may say, ah, oh, what's that? You can't have your protein shake? Most people who have to survive don't even think about fucking protein shakes, you insensitive imbecile. The video did, without a doubt, show up the luxury of his life, but not in a way that meant he wanted to compare it to everyone else's. He just put it into the context that this was the change currently going on. What else do you want from him at that point? He was taking people through the motions of his day under the premise that this time his spending would be limited to one quid on food and drink. This is why he went to Waitrose. This is why he spoke about all the little innate things that he would normally do, that he now can't do due to the expenditure. For me, it doesn't seem hard to understand that, but soon this point of view emerged that because a person who literally survives on one pound wouldn't live this way, then Alfie shouldn't live this way himself. And once again, I completely concur that the title was stupid, but as soon as he was confronted with this fact, he changed it and put out an apology to anyone who it was insensitive towards. It was the right thing to do in the situation, yet the criticism persisted, and soon this narrative was crafted that he was just some rich guy and that because of the comments that he made, he is just ignorant to what all these other people suffer through, even though that's not the impression I received at all. And I wouldn't mind if people mocked this video, it's executed poorly and clumsily, and there's lots to mock, but the moral grandstanding that somehow how bar the title what he did was unacceptable and ignorant is bemusing. You can't immediately connect not spending money with just being poor, just because that's one of the explanations. The only reason the connection was ever made was because he initially presented it as if he was living or surviving, which is something he rectified very quickly. A really good example of someone who just had this huge expectation from such an open premise is this comment on a video that I'll cover soon. They were disappointed that Alfie Days' video did not provide meaningful social commentary about poverty. He wakes up in a mansion every morning for his videos. The only content that can ever really do that are the ones that completely change the environment, such as rich life, poor life. Days never attempted to create a narrative on poverty. Everyone else did that themselves. And normally I defend it as a decent interpretation, but I can't help feel that the reactionary responses to the title completely overlooked human error. Once you get into the video, it seems quite clear to me what he was trying to do. I mean, hell, in spite of its questionable delivery, he even says it himself. So we've got a bit of an interesting day today. We're gonna, we're gonna try something out that I've never even thought about. I've never even contemplated actually doing myself. I don't know why I'm even trying to build this up, because you've already seen the title of the video, so you already know what's happening. Today, if the table will stop wobbling, my total bill for my food and drink intake is gonna be under one pound. Comments like these should have dispelled any links that attempted to be drawn between Alfie Days and actually living in an impoverished environment. He clearly just wanted to see how spending less money affected his lifestyle. And I've watched it all, and there's no reference to being poor. The only thing to be irked by is the annoying depth he talks about his rich life. I couldn't give two shits about that. But as I said at the start, that's like 80% of famous vloggers. Each of his comments are neutral statements about what he can't do, yet so many took them as complaints and that he was a spoiled, out-of-touch elite who doesn't understand the real struggle. He was never presenting it as a struggle though. Here's another example. So it's probably gonna be a little bit difficult because I don't know how I'm gonna be able to get quantity of food for under a pound. He clearly demonstrates a statement of intent. He notes how he cannot buy large amounts of food on one quid. Now, in spite of perhaps lacking a level of intellect, Alfie Days is not a complete moron, and I'm sure he knew he would not be able to purchase large quantities of food with one quid. He clearly said this as a simple observation because Alfie Days is a bit of a basic person. However, people ignored comments like these that may show the video for what it is and honed in on ones like the following comment about his protein bar, which without context could be taken as a complete 
complaints. A piece of bad clickbait was rightfully criticised, however people decide to take it further and further and further and created this image of Alfie Days as someone who he is not. He clearly wasn't trying to do anything else than change his own lifestyle and throughout the video he did not directly draw parallels in a derisory fashion and I do not think he should be crucified for it. Simply put, I want people to be able to make videos on spending small amounts of money with no shame, without being hashtag cancelled. It's not only fairly harmless but also could provide some useful advice on saving money to anyone, regardless of income. People should not criticise the premise, even if Alfie Days' video is not the best example of that. On top of this, I do want people to be able to talk about their lives, rich or poor, in spite of my little interest for vloggers. Once again, they do not need to be crucified for that. And to be honest, Alby Days probably wouldn't have been either if it hadn't been for one very talented man. Or should I say one very talented mate. This is Jackmate. Can't turn on any woman, but can turn on a PlayStation. He is a British commentary YouTuber. He'd been kind of under the radar for a few years until he burst back onto the scene sharper than ever with his video on Zoella's Christmas calendar, in which he gave it a fairly brutal damning review. He then once again turned fairly sharply on Alfie Days for his one quid video. Now, I'd say Jackmate is simultaneously one of my favourite and least favourite commentators, and everything that makes him good is simultaneously what leads me to my multiple objections with him. Him. As commentators go, Jackmate is an absolute firebrand. He's sharp, energetic, his editing is some of the most tonally matched in the game, and on top of that, he has the very unique ability to actually be funny. I'm a miserable bellend, and I practically find nothing funny, but I take exception to some of Jackmate's content, which does, from time to time, throw a good joke in there. Now, as a disclaimer, I've spoken about him once before in my apologising for homophobia video, in which I stated that I felt a video made by him was rather unnecessary and preachy. However, otherwise, I've had no outspoken qualms with him, and obviously that situation is completely separate to what we're discussing today. Jackmate, at his funniest, is also at his angriest. And sure, he can be funny without it, but the charge of emotion that is powered by anger juxtaposed with the humour often makes for a more amusing viewing. Which is why I assume he loaded his videos on Zoella and Alfie Days with a seething fury. Because it does provoke a whirlwind of emotion within the viewer. However, to demonstrate this, he has to make the anger feel justified, which can often cause a tone of outrage to be slightly manipulative. So you'll have Jack here acting open-minded for comedic effect, and then seeing it contradicted by the knowledge of new information that proves the most cynical outlook. For example, he falsely assumes that Zoella's calendar has 25 doors. Well, I think the question is, why isn't it 60? It's got 25 gifts in there, that means a new gift every single day of the month. Huh? 12 doors. It's got 12. It's got 12 doors. Then why the fuck is it 50 quid? Off-screen person, correct him to 12. Shock horror as 12 doors is less than 25. This comedic formula is presented throughout the video. However, this point in particular is one that caught my eye because it was presented as if 12 doors is not normal for these sorts of calendars and Zoella has just chopped it in half. He continuously refers to it as a half calendar. It's better than your traditional calendar because it's only got half of the doors for 10 times the price. This implies that Zoella has purposely reduced the number of doors to extort money from her adoring fans, despite the fact that actually in places like Boots, John Lewis and so on, 12 Doors is fairly ordinary, though if, like me, you're not a regular shopper at such chains, you might not realise that. He also presents the calendar as costing a day's wages, to show how much a person would have to give up. So for the low, low price of just £50, or just one day's wages for your mum and dad, just crazy that. If it was a throwaway joke, I'd be fine, but it is repeated as a narrative, despite the fact that it lies on the assumption that a person's parents would be working on minimum wage, well, below minimum wage, but I won't be that picky. Considering that for a majority of child-bearing ages, the percentage of those on minimum wage is under 10%, it's a bit of a tall narrative, and then considering that most on minimum wage would even expend money on a Christmas calendar, let alone a Zoella one, is very tall. The calendar is probably for upper middle class chumps who have easy money to burn. I'm sure those on minimum wage will be spending it on other things than a 50 quid calendar. <sighs> Jackmate basically paints the very sympathetic story of the working class veteran who was on a hard day's labour and went and spent what little money they had left on a Zoella candor for their daughter. And the look of joy on her little face when she was presented it was undercut from the heartbreak when she opened door one and found a bauble, which, as riveting an image it is, is seldom the case. And you know, I try to avoid being pedantic, though it is kind of who I am, but when you're trying to make something seem worse than it actually is, you still have to be somewhat accurate 
inaccurate with the premises. One of my pet peeves is when people use exaggerative humor, but exaggerate before applying the humor, and then use the humor as a shield when people rightfully criticize their inaccurate depiction. Normally, it's the exaggeration which is the source of the misinformation, but what some sneaky people will do is they'll chuck in some slight misinformation and then base the exaggeration around it. A really good example off the top of my head in this instance is Racism Dog. It strikes the balance of being completely inane with everything it does, and yet people take it seriously enough to actually value what it's saying. And yet the light-hearted premise means that if you criticize it, you'll have a load of people saying stop taking it so seriously, despite the fact that those people are often the ones taking its statements the most seriously. People aren't necessarily challenging the delivery, they're challenging the implication. Now it's fair to say that Jackmate's video was not the first response to the topic as he read out in his video. There were plenty of negative reviews upon release, and hopefully I explain why people took a specific distaste to this calendar earlier. However, he was the one who fanned the flames, and I don't really blame him for the way he thought, but I do blame him for the delivery, which did follow the same format as described earlier. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see for yourself. There isn't much more to say about the Zoella video, although I do think it's framed very cynically and the constant talk of exploitation is rather tiresome, everyone else can judge it on their own terms. However, when the Alfie Day situation came around, Jackmate smelled blunt and was raring to call him out. I mean, even his fans expected him to. After all, it's right up his street. However, hopefully I showed earlier beyond the title, it's clear there wasn't much to call him out for beyond a misunderstanding. Jackmate had also covered Alfie Days before on a video called My Opinion on Alfie Days, half of which is fairly solid commentary, though he did seem to run off on a tangent towards the end, and it never quite stabilised. So this situation came around, and the algorithm was obviously going to support such a video on him. However, if you make a video, you have to make a video. And so Jackmate did. Like his Zoella video on the surface, it was fine. Sharp, funny, fairly to the point. But once you look beyond the humour, certain points become rather dubious. A fair proportion of it are the sort of points that we've already discussed. The idea that he was completely complaining about a lack of commodities and was comparing those to the struggles of others. I realised I can't even use that. I'm going to have to use this tap water instead. So not only can he not use his ice from his ice making machine, he can't even drink his purified silver mounted distilled Voss H2O premium water from his fridge. What is a man to do? He's got to drink normal water from a tap like normal people. It's not fair. So Ella didn't sell calendars for this shit. Once again, video and description below if you want to see it for yourself. However, I want to hone in on specific points outside of that narrative because these ones are fairly contributory to what he crafted. For example, this. It's weird because he tweeted the video, that's all he did, just tweeted the video. That got a lot of backlash, so he removed the tweet. But the video is still up with five mid-roll adverts. Now, at the time of this video, Days had replaced the video tweet with a written apology addressing it that is currently gone, but likely because he made a video apology. So my initial thoughts were, well, maybe Jack placed the video up after Days deleted his apology and missed it. But upon research, I found by looking at times on people who replied to Days' initial apology that it was still up well after the video was posted. So it seemed Jack wasn't quite looking hard enough when he made the claim which paints Alfie as someone who's just trying to dodge criticism. A fairly trivial thing, in a way, but if you're going to imply something about someone's courage or character, then it's important that you do get the facts straight. There are also a set of comments about how Alfie spends his money on items, such as personal trainers. Oh, sorry, just a quick one. A personal trainer's free or lower than a quid? Or this. Bought myself a t-shirt. He's literally just buying everything now. I mean, stuff that's like the least essential things in all. I thought you were meant to be spending a quid. Bought myself a game for me and Zoe and our family and friends to play. What? In spite of the fact that we already know, and he says that Alfie Days was only spending one quid on food and drink. The shock is clearly just for comedic effect, but once again, omitting this information is a misframing of Alfie's video and makes him seem much worse than the actual video in context demonstrates. To hone in on the narrative that really got under my skin, especially when it was delivered well, was this one. Does he not realise that thousands of people in this country have no choice but to live on that money every day and they hate it? Do you know what I mean? They have families to support and they hate it. But he's strutting about his mansion like, <laughs> 
fun. Uh, it's well fun pretending to be poor. This sounds all fine and moral when you have a firebrand like Jackmate delivering it, but his logic is this. Person A commercializes something for fun that person B does not have the choice to do and detests. Therefore, person A should not do it, which is logic that would encompass a lot of modern challenges. The reason why we don't lambast them is because they provide context that makes us know that they're not mocking those suffering. We understand the context of something like Deadly Twister, for example. We're not mocking torture victims. The only context that eluded Days was mocking the poor was his original title that he did change. Nothing else in the video reflected that. But by the time he changed this, people almost needed to create their own reasoning to be angry at this otherwise. Throughout Jackmate's video, there's this perpetuated expectation that for some reason, because he's spending one quid in one day, that he should wholly adopt the lifestyle of an impoverished person, despite the fact that he gave no inclination of doing such, and that should have been evidence that he wasn't trying to do that. This once again lies on the assumption that if you spend low amounts of money on food and drink in a day, then you must be poor, which just isn't true. There are plenty of people who spend as little amount of money as possible on said products, and likewise there are people who are poor who just spend high amounts of money on lifestyle and therefore have nothing left. Correlation isn't causation. Equally, it is not the sole explanation. Not in this scenario, at least. Jackmate is the ultimate commentator. In a way, a populist brand of YouTuber, pushing this narrative that we have a set of out-of-touch elite vloggers who are business-oriented and have no idea how the other half live or what they want to see. And to be honest, he might be right to an extent. But the narrative can't be found in every example, particularly in the ones that we've discussed today. However, because there was some level of wrongdoing being committed, it allowed people to create further narratives that went after the characters in question more than it ever needed to and justify it because to some extent it does sound logical. But a lot of the points weren't. And although they were well coordinated, they went after these people for the wrong reasons. And that's something I can simply never endorse. Zoella and Alfie Days made some bad decisions and everyone turned out to stick that nail into the coffin. Partly because it's a fruitful topic, also because there's not much audience crossover, but there is a widespread appeal. And because vloggers and commentators have never had quite the best relationship. And when it happened first time round, it may have felt right. But for me, looking back, I can't say I feel the same. I think trying to say as much about their characters as people did was an overreaction. That is coming from someone like me who loves character studies. Having the strict moral code that many YouTubers seem to adopt in these scenarios to prove these people wrong would almost definitely lead to hypocrisy in any other dramatic situation on YouTube and in the real world. I know that might not be a popular opinion, but it's my opinion. The right opinion. Wink, wink. Anyhow, I always love to hear what people think. Drop it down in the comments below. And I will typically read them in the first few hours. And I will read the top comments on a constant basis. Also want to give a huge shout out to the editors. Go check their content out. Go give them a subscription if you have the time. If you can, spare a minute and go and send them some love. Because they deserve it. The channel would not be where it is today without their dedication. If you want to contact me about anything specifically, you can reach me on Twitter. At The Right Opinion. I'm always around on there. You can reach me on Facebook. I'll leave the link to that in the pinned comment below. Discord too. I, I have a Discord server. You'll love to pop by in there. You can even reach me on email, but who the hell uses email? Some people have reached on me on email, actually. Uh, so there you have it. But anyhow, I try to make myself accessible. Once again, thanks for all the support of recent. Hopefully this video has done something positive for you at least. Until then, I'm the right opinion, and I'll see you in the next one.